father, who was a, a doctor and a great collector of, also he was a sort of poet, um, a painter, I think. And he had lots and lots of books, and he left me a great stash of books. And one afternoon, I was just going through some of them, and I found this collection of Priestley's short stories, essays, and two plays. One of which, the roundabout, I'd never heard of. So that's Hugo, my advice. Anyway, so I read it. This is really good. It's really funny, and it's really uh, topical in a funny kind of way. You think it's a good play, and you think if a play has been lost, you think it must be rubbish. But this isn't. And it was. What is telling of a good play is that if you just you want to get to the end of it, you don't just get bored and think, oh God, I would rather watch Corrie than read the rest of it, you know. And actually, I read it right to the end in one sitting, and it was fabulous. I, I for one, I'm incredibly surprised this play hasn't been done or haven't been discovered sooner. And that's the great privilege of doing it. Yeah, course, absolutely. Is to do a J.D. Priestley play that nobody knows. I, I read the play and just thought, why has this never been done before? I just thought, well, I mean, I didn't know how many plays he'd written, but I just thought maybe this one had just not been rediscovered like the others have been. But the interesting thing about it is not like any other play by Priestley that I've ever come across. It should be, really in a drawing room with French windows and the people go, oh God, a drawing room with French windows. It's actually we've sort of set in the conservatory. She's got audience on three sides, so I think for the cast as well, it's difficult to remember that you're not just performing forward, you're also performing inside as well. And it's good because I haven't actually got bored <laughs> during watching it multiple, multiple, multiple times. It's actually really entertaining, yeah. I think despite the fact that it's like 80 years old, I think that people, I mean, of all ages, will love it. Yeah, I think it can appeal to everyone. Because that's the thing, because it's not just like an on the surface, lovely job, the 30s kind of thing. There is like that political undercurrent, which I think everyone, especially now, can find relevant. Like any good play, it's got that nice mix of entertainment, humour, pathos, and a very, very uh, distinct message that couldn't be more relevant to uh, the political climate of today. It's kind of a whirlwind, a roundabout of comedy. Did you just do that? I just, just, I just went there. <laughs> it that. just builds up and builds up it. and builds up. Uh, and the, in a really, f not like, in a ridiculous way, but still truthful. It's not, it doesn't become silly. I thought it was fun. I giggled. I found it very interesting. I found the parallels between the, the the political parallels. I found interesting. It's like nothing changes. I think this is a very good play for everybody because it is a great story. It's an old-fashioned play with three acts, and it's a great story, and that never goes away. And you will see what you know how plays were structured before, and they work. <laughs> I think it's a very good play and I think it would be across the board a very good play for the audiences. I find that every single character, however large or small, has their moment and uh, the same goes for, for, for Lady Kettlewell. She gets talked about a heck of a lot but yeah. it doesn't come on for a little while. It's a nice setup, but um, I think J.B. Priestley is absolutely brilliant at just giving everybody their chance. Yeah. He obviously has a very firm handle on the social um, mores of the time. Everyone has their moment in this play, and we all have the point, don't we, where, that we look forward to that's our favourite bit of the play. And because the, the, the play actually takes place in a day, so we have uh, morning, uh, uh, afternoon and evening. So it is literally one, one whole day in the life of this country, of this country house, the working, and into which people appear. Not only is it very, the, the funny stuff flew off the page, and I thought, God, this is funny. Actually, there's, just, there's a, a, another side to it, which is a kind of, um, it has an emotional depth that I hadn't quite realised before. Not only is it like a drawing room comedy with real, you know, fabulous sort of lines, um, great, great dialogue, but it's got this underbelly of social current, so, and that's what's lovely about Priestley, it's not just superficial, you know, it has an intellectual backbone to it yeah. as well. The lovely thing for me and Ed's characters, because we have been a bit, uh, have a little less to do, is we do get an opportunity to like watch it. Yeah. And it's generally so entertaining to just yeah. watch and a lot of what a lot. people do. 
You um, always learn more watching. He learns a lot watching me. <laughs> like, not what, what to not do. <laughs> <laughs> it is hugely entertaining. This is absolutely brilliant. This has got everything in it you want. Come without expectation, but with expectation. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And for a very, very entertaining evening. Yeah. But we're not biased, are we? <laughs> <laughs> Still. <laughs>